the race for the SFL playoffs continues to heat up here in the Sports Gamers Online Stadium in Baltimore, where the Queen City Corsairs visit the reigning SFL champion, Baltimore Vultures. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Week 11, the late night slot of Season 21 of the SFL, brought to you by APM Music. I'm your play-by-play -play host, Mark Lopez, and I'm joined in the booth by the ever-intelligent John Warren, Justin Reside and Mel Davis are in stats, and of course, this game is produced by Cameron Irvine. John, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm really excited to be calling an old school rivalry game. This is only my third game I've called, and I'm super excited to call this one. Uh, Queen City is obviously longing for their championship days of yesteryear as they continue to recover from a winless season. And Baltimore is going to make the playoffs again, barring some sort of collapse here. They draft, develop, and keep amazing talent up and down that roster. Big question mark is that offensive line. They're starting five new starters this year, which is unbelievable, but they really show no signs of that being a problem. They're six and three, and they're looking great. So excited to call this one with you. They're looking great indeed with the 6-3 record. As you mentioned, Team City will be choosing heads tonight. And... You'll see the results of coin costs. It will be heads, so Queen City choosing to receive. Uh, Baltimore will kick the ball off. So as this rivalry is rekindled, we'll see. We'll find out which team will come away with the win. The, these teams have not met all the way since season 18, but by then they've already had met each other 11 times. Who will win? We'll find out as this kick is off queen city picking up the ball in the end zone and that will just take a kneel down and start in their 20. aerial coverage of today's game provided by dags drone works aerial photography and videography services for real estate events marketing and more learn more at dagsdroneworks.com very first play the first drive for queen city and their white tops, black pants. On shotgun, we'll start off with a handoff here. First play is a nice run to the left side, picking up eight yards of Zoma. A good start for him on the running game. Yeah, that was a nice look to the outside. Obviously, a ton of space. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Trellis Blanton is more aggressive in this game. I've really liked the balance this year. Really high completion rate, too. We'll see what happens. Second and two, another handoff right here, but that's only a gain of one yard. Let's introduce you to the offense. John, you mentioned Charles Blanton, the quarterback. That's him with the handoff. Uh, the halfback, Jezir and Tony Zoma. Wide receivers, Doug Spelling, Adrian Ellis, and Bob Wood. The tight ends are James Matthew Jr., Chase Matthews. And we'll continue the rest of the offense after this play as they line up once again and split back formation heavy set. A, a late handoff and the first down will be a wow. gain. Oh, goodness. He, they just powered through a zero. All tackle behind the line of scrimmage, but we'll get the first down for Queen City. Would not be denied on that one. That was that was some really impressive. That was a dangerous handoff, but Jet Zero uh, made uh, lemonade out of lemons on that one. Guard Robert Crone will round out the Queen City offense as here's Trellis Blunt with a look to pass and he will find his man first pass for him first completion to doug spelling sorry to ag and ellis and it's a good one yeah Charles blanton is having a great season this this team is obviously still on the losing side but his qbr is more than 20 points above his average so he's having a much better season than normal and said he did win their last week Pushing up their total to three and five. The trellis in first and ten will look to pass. And oh, a deep pass to the left side in the outstretched arm of his receiver. And back to back completions this time to Doug Spelling. Doug Spelling and James Matthew Jr. are really Trellis Blanton's two most reliable targets. And wow, Doug Spelling reached for that one, reeled it in. That was super impressive. What a start for this uh, receiving core. Yeah, Doug Spelling uh, played a one-on-one -on -one matchup versus Elijah Warfield and wins that first matchup 
tonight. That's going to be a matchup we'll see all throughout the night as well. But here comes Trellis Blanton lining up under center with split backs. He's going to look to pass again. So three straight passes in a row. And look at that. Three straight completions. And they find themselves in the two-yard line of Baltimore. This, this team should, uh, the, this fan base should feel good. I mean, obviously going 0-12 last year stings. They're still have a losing record, but they've won two of their last three and they're coming out aggressive here in Baltimore. And that's what you're going to have to do against a really good team. Yeah, and they're, they're definitely doing very good so far in the offensive end with Trellis Blanton throwing 100% so far tonight. Through for... 71% total throughout the season, so he has been very good on that part. He's going to step back once again for a pass. Looks for the end zone, finds a map. Oh, just couldn't find the end zone, as I believe that was number 89 Titan Chase Matthews with the reception and almost a touchdown. That was almost one of the most incredible touchdowns I've ever seen. <laughs> Chase Matthews could not quite keep his feet, but that was still a great play. Only his fifth reception of the season. Could have been his first touchdown of the season or second one but the handoff to zero zero could not get there as baltimore out of reading that heavy set from queen city that is the second time where they've generated negative or zero yards out of that formation yeah frank smith was his 11th tackle for a loss of the season he's uh, second on the team in tackles that was the 66th of the year another heavy set with one wide receiver Split backs. It is a hand up down the middle. Oh, it's, he went for a dive, and they say he got in Jet Zero with the first touchdown of the game. That must have been the nose of the football, the tippy tip of the football, but Jet Zero did apparently get that in. Let's take a look at this replay. Oh, we're just going to see a celebration, which is, you know, I want to see that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, the, that uh, was in. I good. mean, that was great, great extension for Jet <laughs> Zero. Queen City on the board first, Baltimore a little bit on their heels on that defensive drive. Good, nice balance, too, for Queen City and good start. They needed a yard and they will get the yard and six. And with this extra point, they're going to get the seventh point on the board and put be the first ones to put points on the board. Queen City, the visiting team. Looking good on the offense out there. That drive capped off by the one-year touchdown. Uh, at eight place. Sorry, that's not eight place. Uh, nine place, 75 yards with four out of four completions from Trellis Blanton. So a very successful drive right there. As we watch him kick the ball back to Baltimore, who's going to get their chance at running the offense out there on the field. Here's the return all the way. To the 29 yard line a nice spin move setting themselves up for a decent field position yeah that was a good return by david anderson uh, he wanted to cut out to the outside there and get a little bit more but still decent field position for jack wigmore and the rest of this offense so jack wigmore wigmore with his now in foot back formation that steroid gains in the backfield hall of famer right there Twin receivers to the right. Wigmore will look to pass. Throws down the middle. Go oh, could have found a man as that falls incomplete. Let us introduce you to the offense of Baltimore Vultures. Scorching hot offense. The season. Quarterback Jack Wigmore right there. Warren Murray and Tiro Gaines are your halfback and fullback respectively. Wide receivers are Ivory Irvin, David Anderson, Daly Holder, and Max Shima. The tight ends are Caesar Ackerman and Jackson Roberts. We'll get to the front line after this play as they line up in I formation. Twin receivers to the left. It's going to be a fake handoff play action. And that's good by Jack Wigmer. And his second attempt in this drive makes a completion. Yeah, Caesar Ackerman had a chance to catch that first pass that Wigmer threw uh, way downfield. But in traffic, comes down with this one. Wow, what a grab. That was really nice. He's uh, leading the team along with Ivory Urban for touchdowns. If they get down into the red zone, maybe we'll see that again. So first and 10, Wigmore lining up in under center. So the I formation, three wide receivers, but it'll be a handoff. Only a gain, they'll, they'll say he gains zero yards. Here's the rest of the Baltimore offense. Front line. The two tackles are Ray 
Arnold and Olivia Bleeker. Guards are Aiden Bleeker and Jay Arnold. And the center is Don Johnson. Right there, Don Johnson snapping the ball. As Wigmore lines up under center once again. Coming out once again in I formation twins. Second and ten. Wigmore so far throwing twice. Will throw again. Pressure coming from the left side, but able to dump it off for a seven yard gain. Yeah, T Roy able to get just a, a quick, quick dump off catch from Wigmore there. Setting up a, a manageable third and three. We'll see what uh what they dial up. T Roy gains use a lot in both the running and passing game. So right there, his first catch of the evening. Wigmore will look to pass once again, but Ooh. that's deflected. Could have been picked off, but instead it falls harmlessly to the ground. And Wigmore and company will face their first punt of the evening. Yeah, Kappa Jones is such an important part of this Queen City defense, and he got his hands up right there at the point of attack, and uh, now they got a punt. Queen City, sorry, Baltimore. Their punter, Matty Coffins. Not in quite position for a coffin kick yet, but we'll try to punt it deep. And I almost spoke too soon. That actually <laughs> looked like it could have been a coffin kick, John. But instead, yeah, it, it comes a you, touchback. If he had gotten it a little bit toward the left, uh, left to hash, that would have been uh, an incredible punt. Yeah. Uh, comes out to the 20. It is a 20. They completed their 75 yard drive earlier. So, Queen City with a chance to put more points on the board and extend their lead early in this game. So, with under five minutes left in the first quarter, they're going to start this drive with a handoff for about a two yard gain. Tackle right there by Frank Smith. And sec setting up second and eight. Blanton will line up on their center once again with split backs, two wide receivers. It'll be a throw to the left side. Will be caught around the left hash marks by Doug Spelling once again. Yeah, Spelling's having a good night so far. This is the second catch. And uh, he had that spectacular one-handed catch from the earlier drive. So secure for Trellis Blanton. It's so great that he can uh, rely on Spelling for those kinds of catches. Blanton still 100% tonight, 5 out of 5, 74 passing yards. Very good night from him so far. He will look to pass once again, and it's a nice short pass down the middle to uh, Doug Spelling, as always, who now has three receptions early on this game. Yeah, obviously this is the game plan. Uh, they're allowing Trellis Blanton to continue to play aggressively like he has all year but he hasn't turned the ball at over at the same kind of clip that he has in previous seasons. So why not let him let it rip? Let him rip. But this time, the one who was set loose is Jet Zero. Picking up a first down. Only needed three yards, but gets more and a nice running down the middle. Lots of key blocks there, John. Yeah, that was really nice getting downfield at that second level for the offensive line. Just not enough uh, penetration in the gaps. Jet Zero making that look pretty easy. Here comes Queen City. High formation. Two wide receivers to the right. Looking to pass right Ooh. here. And no, oh, that <laughs> pass was well read by the Baltimore defense. That ball is deflected. I believe that was number 56, Alvin Mack, on the deflection. Yeah, Alvin Mack, it's, it's been a few seasons since he made the All-Star game, but he is still a super important part of this Vulture defense and almost came away with a pick there. If he just had some glue on those hands, we'd be talking about a pick six. Could have been, should have been, but instead Queen City will look to play live another day with this drive. First incompletion, that was Charles Benton's first incompletion of the evening. Here we go. An eye formation once again. They send a blitz, but oh, that blitz really impacted that pass. The swing pass turns into an incompletion, a drop by Doug Spelling. 
Yeah, that is, that's two passes in a row that really uh, did not go where I think Trellis Blanton wanted them to. Obviously, the first one just a little bit off. This one obviously impacted by the pressure up the middle uh, by this Baltimore defense. So their first third along of the evening, they're going to line up in bunch empty. And he was going to throw nowhere. Throws to no white uniforms are only reds. And that'll be a punt forced by the Baltimore defense. So after allowing a 75-yard drive, Baltimore will force a punt out of Queen City. Yeah, Baltimore really tightened up on that that sequence. And they're, they're happy to come away with a punt here. Well, this punt is up. And they're going to punt it hopefully deep. It is fair catch. And they're going to start, at least Baltimore will start, in their 15-yard line. If you're new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sideline and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just to meet the stars of the SFL on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved. Baltimore, first and 10 inside the 15-yard line. It'll be a handoff right here. It'll push in the line. Oh, and the game. They got oh, the line. Oh. Oh. What a huge run. Many times, John, you see a player like that where the back get the halfback gets caught up in his line and just tackled there. But look at this. He just bursts free. That Goodness was me. incredible. Burn. This young offensive line of Baltimore <clears throat> making the push. Warren Murray able to get enough push to get into that second layer, then swinging to the outside. That was an incredible <laughs> run. Yeah, incredible run. Some incredible blocking too by the wide receivers, leaving that the right side of the field open and no tacklers for miles. So now they find themselves near their 40 yard line. Here's a deep step back by Wigmore. He'll Oof. look for a deep throw and throws into triple coverage essentially. Yeah, Jackson Roberts would have had to really, really fight for that for his fourth catch of the season. You'll have to wait. Uh, that was a dangerous throw from Jack Wigmore. Uh, I would uh, I would maybe think about running the ball a couple more times. <laughs> yeah, after that huge run by Warren Murray. Um, but they will line up and with wide receivers, three wide receivers spread out, and two running backs lined up in the affirmation. It's a handoff, and the key block by the fullback. I believe T. Roy Gaines helped Warren Murray burst through. Yeah, T. Roy Gaines was here on that second level block. This blocking from this Baltimore Baltimore offense has been spectacular mm. in the early going. Look at that spread out to the left. That was, I believe, yeah, that was Alden Bleeker. No, I'm sorry. That was Ray Arnold who got out there. Rookie, number eighth pick in the draft this past year, bouncing to the outside to help uh, Warren Murray get all those yards. So pretty bad game so far from Baltimore as Wigmore will look to pass and will make the completion. Nice catch by Daly Holder. Yeah, very good catch by Daly Holder. They're starting to see how this balance can really work wonders for the passing game. Just a little soft spot in that zone. <coughs> Holder getting behind it and another great catch. We've seen a few really spectacular catches so far in this game. Yeah, we're talking about balance. Baltimore so far in the season, has been known for their ground game, leading the league in rushing yards and average yards per carry. Number one in both categories, as you have your two star halfbacks right here. You see right here, Warren Murray once again getting the handoff. Another nine yard pickup. End the season, him and uh, Gaines averaging eight point, sorry, 6.1 yards per carry. And tonight, they're just gaining yards here, John. Yeah, I mean, when you have 23 years of experience in your backfield, you want to lean on it. And these two players are chasing <laughs> history. They're chasing all sorts of records. They're going to break all sorts of records in their careers. And uh, yeah, they're having a big night tonight so far. Warren Murray, top three total all time in total carries. Still quite a bit behind Robert Redford, but it's not him. It's going to be Gaines. With the handoff, he will pick up the first down and more before being tackled. But that's about an eight-yard gain once again. I mean, T-Roy is saying, hey, give give me the rock. I, I was asking if uh, Warren Murray's got 39 yards. He's got not, He's got almost 10 yards of carry. Let me uh, see what I can do with this uh, offensive line. 
He's actually the one with more yards between the two backs so far in the season. Yeah. With 195 carries and 1,200 yards in nine games. So very productive from him. Warren Mary, no slouch either with 600 yards in 117 carries for the season. But it's Wigmore that's going to be throwing this time and finds a man. Oh, he's going to find a touchdown almost. That was so close. Ivory Irvin could have powered through, but nice tackling by Queen City. Saved a touchdown there. That was such a nifty move right at the point. I mean, <clears throat> Ivory Urban knew he was going to get hit. He knew he needed to plant his foot. Woo! Wow! That was that was a pretty spectacular juke made GB Wallace lose his cleats. Almost scored a touchdown, too, but they're set up for a nice first and goal. It was either Alex Marshall or Todd Rigsby making the tackle at the end. Here's a handoff and another dive by the other team. This time, Hero Games finds the end zone for six. Wow, you know, I thought Baltimore was going to be completely fine going into the second quarter with a first and goal. They said, no, 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 I'm going to snap the ball. I'm going to hand it to my Hall of Famer, T. Roy Gaines, and we're going to get a touchdown, put six up, and then we're then we're going to go to the second quarter. Now, with, with both teams' players making some incredible dive plays, I'm surprised I haven't heard of their names in some professional diving league or something. <laughs> they were graceful out there. Extra point is good. Baltimore will tie it up. 7-2-7. Seven, seven. And that also marks the end of the first quarter, folks. Thank you for joining us tonight in Baltimore as they host Queen City. Stay with us. And we're back here for the second quarter of games as Baltimore, after stalling out in their first drive, come back with a scorching hot drive. Look at this. Eighth place, 82 yards for a touchdown. And so now Quinn City will have their chance once again with the offense. For all league highlights, photo galleries, major and minor league stats and leaderboards, community content, and so much more, check out the league's website at simulationfl.net, presented by Football Shift. Stay up to date and explore our past, our present, and our future. Here comes the Queen City offense lining up in high formation. Wins, twin receivers on the right side. It's going to be a pass. Blanton, Travis Blanton will throw to the middle. He'll find a man deep. They are going to find themselves and their 40-yard line with a nice completion right there to Adrian Ellis. Yeah, that was a great route by Adrian Ellis, who uh, was able to, to get in space in the middle of the field. Look at that. He knew he was going to get smacked really hard up the middle, held on to the ball. I, I would not like to get hit by Giovanni Bolt in the middle of the field. I don't know about you, but... Uh, no, Ellis, sir. Ellis held on. Yeah, this I believe either the safeties or the linebackers playing zone on the edge, and then that just opened up the inside for that nice catch. Here's a handoff. Zero, breaking away from some tackles. Nice swim move, and will find himself a gain of six yards. Yeah, Keenan Samuels did meet him at that second level and prevented a bigger run there, but uh, still, still a decent first down play to get about six yards setting it up for a nice manageable two second and four they're staying ahead of the sticks second and four another hand up to zero this time he tries to run to the right breaks a tackle but not the second one as giovanni bolt runs all the way from the free safety position to make a nice tackle yeah we've called giovanni's name a couple times he's uh, leading this team in tackles and you can see why he's just such a good uh, a discipline tackler wraps him up, takes him down. Third and short, it'll be a pass by Blanton. Wow. And wow, wow, indeed. It is a nice catch right there by James Matthew Jr., his 54th catch, the leading receiver for Charles Blanton, an incredible one by him. Woo. Oh, look at that. Just missing the fingertips of the defender by that inches. Is that is what you call fighting for a 50-50 ball. That could have easily gone the other way. Charles Blanton's been aggressive all season. He's trusting his receivers. James Matthew Jr. there with a clutch grab. Nice grab indeed, giving Blanton his over 100-yard mark passing right there. But he's going to have three wide receivers spread out here. 
he will look to pass. Charles Blanton rolling out the bit to the right side. Oh! Oh, it's deflected. It could have been. It was in the arms of the defender. John could have been picked off. Yeah, Troy Lashaw could have had his fourth interception of the year. Instead, he's going to have to just be okay with his ninth pass defense. Uh, but wow, that was that was a really dangerous pass. Another one from Trellis Blanton that could have gone in a terrible direction. But uh, lucky for him, it fell to the ground. He hasn't had a lot of interceptions in the season seven. No. Which is tied for 10th best. And that was almost his eighth. But here, he's going to line up with two wide receivers, one on each side. He will look to pass once again, but it's a swing pass instead to Zero. Zero finds some room in the open space. He'll pick up nine yards before being tackled. So nice play right there. Des nice play design after running pass plays vertically with wide receivers. Throws horizontally to Zero. Yeah, and Zero is a great pass catcher out of the backfield. So it's, it's good to mix it up a bit. Take some pressure off a of trellis. And we'll set up a third and short which so far they've been very successful to continue their success out of third and short down situations and zero getting another one for the team. Yeah, just good. We're seeing a lot of really nice offensive line play, especially on the running side of offenses for both teams. And that was a good push to get the uh, first down. They really like and the three spread receivers here as Travis Blanton will look to pass. It's another swing pass, but this time it's not zero. Who takes the call? It's Tony Zoma, and he will pick up three yards out of that play. Yeah, Keenan Samuels was there. Make sure that didn't go any further. Good tackle from him. Good tackle indeed. Saw the play once. Will not be fooled a second time as here they go out of split backs and one wide receiver to the left. Trellis will look to pass once again. A lot of passes back in this drive, but it's another completion, John. Yeah, he's targeted Chase Matthews a few times. This is his first catch of the game, I believe. Uh, and that was a pretty good one. Again, up the middle. Knew he was going to get hit by Giovanni Bolt. Called his number quite a few times, but great job to reel that in. There was also a nice route by A.G. and Ellis, I believe, to the outside that pulled the cornerback with him, opened up the middle of the field for that catch. But here comes Charles Blanton once again. The pass. He has time. And wow. he has a touchdown. What a pocket. That's going to be Doug Spelling's fifth touchdown catch of the season. Comes at a great time. Quinn City trying to look for an answer for that big Baltimore drive. And they found it. Wow. Just uh. in the back of the end zone. Giovanni Bolt kind of bit on that. Went to the inside. Instead, Doug Spelling kept running his route at the end of the end zone. That was a great play. Yeah. Great play indeed. And you mentioned about that pocket. Uh, Blanton could have cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He did cook, <laughs> and he did find a touchdown there. And yeah. he, he, he could have gone to the Baltimore shore, caught a few crabs, made a bisque. <laughs> like he could have done a whole lot. I know. Listen, I'm hungry. I, I haven't eaten yet. We talked about that before we got on. Yeah, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> I've had my dinner, but that talk of crab bisque. <laughs> might have just sparked my appetite again but you know whose appetite appetite is sparked here is the baltimore offense as they want to answer back they're going to return the ball oh that's a broken tackle they're br going to be whoa win city his special teams they took it back he's still running and they will be brought down in baltimore's 19 yard line what a turn of events out of special team break that down john Joe Carfield, the kicker, coming up with this fumble recovery. Are you oh. kidding me? Scoops it up and he says, I'm not just going to pick it. I'm going to try to score. That is unbelievable. Uh. If I, He will never have a moment like that in his career again. Joe Garfield, take that ball home. I hope they, I hope they kept it for him. What a play to set up Queen City with amazing field position in the red zone. The Pirates find themselves here and the red zone instantly to the first play out of that drive they had just scored a touchdown and here they are running the ball once again it's a three-year pickup by zero god you know you're really uh, to beat a team like baltimore you have to turn them over you have to make them kind of a little tight you have to make them right. a little worried about about how they're going to score and this this kind of turnover is a killer 
five men in the box for Baltimore. They'll allow only a two, three yard pickup. Once again by zero right there. Man, that play caught them reeling. But the defense will have to hold, hang on tight. It's third and four. This is a chance for them to not allow a touchdown. Yeah, Baltimore's defense just left the field. They're <clears throat> back out there now. It's a throw this time by Travis Blanton. He's going to throw to the right Whoa. side, and that is well defended, well covered. Of course, you got to cover dog spelling. Been great so far tonight, and that'll be the first uh, potential scoring touchdown in the red zone by Queen City. That'll turn to into a field goal. It's great defense by Alvin Mack there on the uh, sideline. Baltimore lucky to come away with a field goal attempt here from Queen City. Out of that play, it'll end up into a field goal and in a hurry, Queen City will put themselves up 17 to 7. And boy, I really like that play, that fumble return by the kicker. If you're liking that play and you're liking the game so far, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The SFL produces, produces over 400 events a year, and there is no one else that gives you more football. Don't miss a minute of the SFL or SFL I'm action and help the channel grow through your support. Here comes Queen City once again, kicking off after just kicking the ball off four plays ago. This time, they want to secure the ball here, John. They don't want to fumble it. They're just going to say touchback. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. We, we, we don't need to run this one out. David Anderson had a, a decent return. He was on his way to have a second one when that fumble was forced. I'm going to have to do some big research here, but that might be the first time ever a kicker has recovered a fumble and then converted that into points himself. That is an incredible turn of events. Well, Baltimore is going to need to be incredible the entire rest of the game. Down 10 points, and they're going to start out incredible in this drive as Warren Murray picks up, what is that, 15, 20 or so yards. Warren Murray is on a tear so far in this game. Uh, he just added another, what, 15, 20 yards to his total. Wow, 60 yards on the day. That is an incredible start for this man. You know, when T-Roy has only touched the ball twice and this uh, backfield is up to uh, over 70 yards, they're doing something right. Yeah, this backfield over 70 yards. Uh... You're right, only two touches by Tiro gains for a total of nine. Here comes Warren Murray with another handoff. He'll pick up six yards for being hit hard down there at the middle. Uh, number 31, the tackler, G.B. Wallace, finds his fifth tackle of the evening. So second and four. Baltimore in second and short situation. It's a toss play to Gaines. Gaines trying to force a stiff arm. He's not going to find the first down. He was close, though. Yeah, he was close. I bet he's kicking himself. He wanted to maybe turn up field a little bit faster, just try to get that first down. But this is a very manageable third in inches, so we'll see what they drop here. Here Gaines. Uh, more of a power runner in this league for the team, for Baltimore at least. They're gonna line up in strong power eye with a handoff to Gaines. Gaines, look at this, power running. He keeps on chugging, he keeps on churning. We'll get a first down. I mentioned the youth on this offensive line and, and they've given up uh, 11 sacks on the year from Jack Wigmore, but this run offense is just spectacular. And it's looking very spectacular today. Yeah, when you have five-star linemen, it just opens up opportunities for pass protection, running blocking, and here's Wigmore looking to pass. That pass protection sh showing wonders, allowing him time to make a nice completion to Ivory yeah. Irvin. Great catch by Ivory Irvin. It should really scare the rest of the league that they're starting three rookies this year mm -hmm. on Baltimore's offensive line. This offensive line is just going to get better. It's just going to get better. This, this backfield tandem is experienced, uh, and they're putting the league on notice tonight. They definitely are. After starting the season, two losses, they, are, they now find themselves six wins. Oh, no! It's an interception! 
they turned it over in back-to-back -back drives. They're, they, he keeps on going. The referee blocks his way. Oh, my goodness. Referee, get out of there. Wigmore able to chase that down, but GB Wallace with a huge interception. This is what Queen City's got to do. If you're if you're outmatched by a better roster, you've got to create turnovers. You've got to create big moments. This is an absolutely massive turnover. Jack Wigmore wishes he could have that one back. It's the seventh interception of the year. Oof, man, that is nah. wild. That is wild. That hurts as well for the offense. If you know you're down ten and you want to generate momentum, your side. Yeah, it's killing. That definitely hurts. Green City lining up in shotgun, kind of signaling a pass play out of this play. It'll be a pass by Charles Blunton. He throws into triple coverage. He could have thrown the ball back to Baltimore right away. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame them for wanting to be a little bit aggressive here, try to really capitalize on these turnovers. Uh, that was a dangerous pass by Trellis Blanton, but uh, it did not matter. He's still, he's still completing two-thirds of his passes, which is mm. quite impressive. Yeah, incredible passing by him tonight as they line up once again in I formation with twin receiver. Once again, Trellis Blanton and another swing pass right here. This time, it's going to be a pickup of about four yards if he finds his receiver, Adrian Ellis. Yeah, he was driven out of bounds a little bit earlier. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ellis, that's his fourth catch of the game. 65 yards on the day. Decent day for him so far. Let's see what they dial up here on third and six. Yeah, they're not quite at field goal range almost. But it'll be a nice dump off here to 0-0. Zero, zero. We'll pick up maybe three yards. That, I believe, will set them up for a field goal attempt here. Potentially. I think they're a little too far back for that, but we'll see what they decide. Uh, that was great defense by Baltimore. Uh, created some oh. pressure right away. And then also just filled that second layer. There's absolutely <clears throat> nowhere for Jed Zero to go. So it's going to be a punt instead. You're right. It's not close for a field goal. This is going to be Baltimore starting inside their 14-yard line. And Baltimore, despite looking, you know, they're, they've been productive. Total yards of almost 200 in the first half. But those two turnovers have been key against them. Yeah, I mean, this Baltimore defense has bailed them out a little bit. Only three points allowed for them as two turnovers. Two-minute drill here. See what Jack Wigmore and the rest of this team can do. First play out of this drive. Hand off for a two-year game. And if I'm Queen City, I'm, I need to just clamp down here, hold on to this lead, and go into the half with a 10-point. It's a two-minute warning. The score is 17 to 7 favor of the visiting Queen City. Will this drive before the end of the half mean success for Baltimore? Will they be able to swing some momentum back their way? We'll see. Thank you for joining us, this is the SFL brought to you by APM Music. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. Everyone in chat, happy to be here. Glad you're joining us. Baltimore will line up with two wide receivers and an offset eye formation as Wigmore with a very deep step back. He got a lot of time there to throw, but I think just a bit of miscommunication with his receiver there, John, mistimed that pass. Yeah, that looked like uh, it looked like Wigmore was trying to hit him on the outside, maybe back shoulder instead, went inside, and uh, yeah, uh, errant throw there, but he had, he had all day. That pocket was incredible for Baltimore. The pocket stayed a straight line. It didn't even like change shape, but they're gonna line up in bunch formation as Wigmore will ro roll out to the right. And that was a good decision as there was a, co he finds his man, throws deep, will convert on the first down and they're gonna set up just near the midfield. Yeah, Mac Chima, what a catch. Uh, Baltimore really would love to double dip here. They'd love to score at the end of the half, and then they also get the ball at the beginning of the second half. So they'd love to put some pressure on Queen City going into halftime. But uh, good start, at least. Mac Chima, 27 yards on that catch. 
they did have a good start in their previous drive too, but that ended in a turnover. So they're hoping this doesn't turn or have a similar fate as this is a toss play to Murray. Warren Murray, he's going to find open space and his speed at finding the edge and running to the outside, picking up 12 yards, it seems unmatched so far tonight. Yeah, you might scratch your head a little bit at uh, doing a toss play during a two-minute drill, but when you're averaging well over 10 yards a carry, you can just consider that to be money offense, get your, get your team down the field. 87 yards on the day so far for Warren Murray. What a, what a game he's having. Beautiful running by Warren Murray tonight. He has been the star so far for Baltimore as Warren Murray is the lone back but lines up offset will get the another handoff it's a five-year gain and that will prompt Baltimore to call their first time out of the half yeah I mean two more two more timeouts a minute left Baltimore's got plenty of time to make something out of this they are they're near field goal range, if not already at field goal range. But Baltimore will look to bat. Oh, there's a pressure right there. How did he not get sacked? Instead, Wigmore will find the receiver on the right side and will call the second time out. Wigmore stayed so cool with the pocket collapsing around him. Ivory Irvin there for the, for the grab. And uh, they're set up in the red zone here. At least they can come away with uh, three points here, they would hope. But Wigmore wants to give him six or seven heading into the half. Dan Dash practically had his arm on Wigmore's shoulder. Here's Wigmore once again with a nice swing pass. The Warren Murray will run out of bounds. Good job by him stopping the clock there. Yeah, just veteran presence. Warren Murray knows he's got to get out of bounds. Knew there wasn't a lot upfield for him. Got out of bounds really fast. We still have a, more than a minute left here. This is a great drive so far that Jack Wigmore is helming. Absolutely. As they're going to line out single backs, three receivers spread out. And I believe that was a tight end. And slot formation. Oh, there's the pass. Oh, that looked very easy. Oh, Wigmore. You're a nasty man. Ivory Irvin was a nice touchdown catch as well. Yeah, that play call was amazing. Just create some traffic and some congestion on the left side. A little bit of confusion about assignments. Wow, Ivory Urban just got to the outside, made that look so easy for Jack Wigmore. Here on the board again with six. Jack Wigmore feeling a little bit better about this game. He's got to. That was a great drive. Yeah, great drive indeed. Look at the numbers of Jack Wigmore. Ha has a one interception, but already over 150 yards, 168 in fact. And that'll mean instead of going into the half down 10 they find themselves cutting the lead to three so now it's 17 14 in a hurry you, you know oh god so with the game update we're gonna come back after this kickoff it, the ball will be received by queen city in the end zone returned all the way to 25 that's where they're gonna start this drive here's a game update from cameron Irvine in the other game Thank you, Mark. Plenty of highlights I could show you in this one, but we're going to go with Dr. Third Down. Dave Bird, a DR Sim with the score. 27-24 in the third. It's been a shootout. Alamo City back in the red zone. Back to John and Mark. Don't worry about me, guys. Keep doing your thing in Baltimore. Welcome back, everyone. Bean City here themselves will want to continue doing their thing, which is score points. Keep the ball moving. Pressure coming on Charles Benton's face, but he's able to dump it off to zero. It's only a one-year game, though, as the defense able to collapse on him quickly. I was I was going to say, I mean, they gave Queen City a minute to come down and potentially score again. That's a lot of time for an aggressive offense, an aggressive quarterback like Trellis Blanton, but they're keeping this clock running. Yeah, still holding three timeouts in their pocket. It's another short pass on the outside. And they're not even trying to run out of bounds. They're just intent on letting this clock go down to zero. Yeah, Adrian Ellis, he's been in the league for four seasons. I don't know if that was just, uh, you know, a little bit of lack of experience on getting out of bounds there or if this is just what they're coaching them. Just go into the half. Don't turn it over. 
20 seconds mm -hmm. left. So it looks like they're content to go in up three. Yeah. But it almost seems like the expected value of running out of bounds is just way higher as opposed to running inbounds. Instead, they're running the clock. It's 10 seconds left in the game clock. The, yeah, game clock in the half, six seconds. And we are going to the half, 17 to 14. And that's it. Boy, what a first half that was, John. Yeah, exciting action. We, we saw a couple of really bizarre turnovers. I'll never see anything like that. Uh, like, like that Joe Garfield fumble recovery in my life, probably. Uh, amazing backfield action from Warren Murray and T. Roy Gaines on Baltimore's side. They've really been the difference maker there. Queen City, they've only scored three points on those two turnovers. That might be the story of the second half. Maybe they haven't done enough to pull away from Baltimore. We're going to see how the second half unfolds, but what a first half. I mean, I, I didn't expect it to be this close. I kind of thought Baltimore at home. Queen City has been so bad on the road for the past couple of seasons. Um, and uh, it's it's been a game. Yeah, it's been a game for sure. Queen City with the early lead, first touchdown, they first a turnover, uh, two turnovers, in fact, as you mentioned. So, yeah, we'll see if that might be a point that they do enough with just three points out of those two turnovers as we start the second half right here uh last time it was queen city receiving so this time baltimore will receive out of the half so that means that touchdown to end the first half they're gonna carry over some momentum here john yeah i would think so i mean the momentum really feels like it's swung queen city not really doing anything with that final drive feels like a little bit of a, 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 a conservative approach <clears throat> Two hands on that football, David Anderson. Two hands on that <laughs> football. Yeah, absolutely. So they all snow fancy moves too, as I believe that fumble earlier was caused pretty much by him trying to run in the open field. But this time, hangs onto the ball. It's a decent start field position anyway. It's a 31-yard position. So that's where they're going to start Baltimore first down. Start the second half and their 31 yard line. They're going to line up with two wide receivers on the left side as Wigmore will look to pass once again. Oh, that pass down the middle has been unanswered so far by Queen City. Yeah, there's been a lot in the middle of the field for Jack Wigmore, Caesar Ackerman. Great catch here. Great ball. Just put underneath only where Caesar Ackerman could get it. Good start to this drive for Jack Wigmore. Interesting route and play decision to, to have the receiver run to basically one of the two, you know, free safeties, uh, the two deep back safeties, and they are just unable to answer that. That was just a good pass, good catch right there by Baltimore. As Wigmore will look to pass out of second and ten. Uh, that's an incompletion. Yeah. Queen City sending pressure to the edges. Wigmore stayed good, but Urban unable to corral that pass. Yeah, back to that last play, that Ackerman <clears throat> catch. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting look for the defense. Two safeties deep, not a ton of help in the middle of the field underneath. Kind of a soft zone, and they took advantage of it. <clears throat> Let's see if they take advantage of any defense here once again. Split backs. Wigmore's going to motion one of his men from the right to the left. That is James Matthew. Sorry, not James Matthew. Uh, that is Caesar Ackerman, I believe, lining up the other side. But the handoff right here will be for a very short gain as Queen City will force Baltimore to try a third and long. Yeah, they sent uh, they they sent Mac Chima in motion there, maybe to confuse them, get some defenders over to the left side. It did not really fool Queen City. It was not a big gain. No, but here they're gonna lie in trips. Oh, those receivers cut to the inside. That opened up the backfield. The safeties bit to try to help down the middle, and instead, Chima will find his way behind them. Yeah, this time when Chima lines up in the slot, they actually pulled the trigger on a pass play. Runs a great route here. That zone's just too soft. Mm. I think I want to see Queen City play a little more man-to-man, -man, play a little more aggressively. Mac Chima taking advantage of it. That was a great, great play call. 
a great play call. Those everyone cut back in and that just pressured the backs to make a play. They couldn't. Here's another handoff. Murray is just looking spectacular out there, but his line is making him look spectacular. <laughs> yeah. I mean he almost forgot about Warren Murray, uh, which is which is a bonkers thing to say with the first half that he had, but Jack Wigmore has been throwing it downfield. They wanted to say, hey, just, just so you know, just so you remember, of my 96-yard running back legend backfield here is still here. And yeah. they're still really good. And with second and two, they're going to line up in a, in a heavy set, but with one wide receiver out there. It's a handoff. It's Steroid Gaines. Steroid Gaines will barely get the first down, and he will referee say he does. And they're just inching closer and closer to the end zone. They're in about the 15-yard line now. Yeah, they're set up nicely here. T. Roy Gaines, there's just a first down machine. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, in short distance, hand it to T. Roy. Here's Wigmore, though. Gonna sling it again. The gunslinger, late blitz coming, but Whoa. it's not good enough. It's a touchdown. Easy peasy once again by Baltimore. Two back-to-back -back touchdown drives, and Ivory Irvin, benefactor of both touchdowns. Ivory Irvin, I mean, this, this, this he had all day to get to the middle. That's a great ball. I mean, uh, Jack Wigmore had so much time to just set his feet, find the right angle to get it to Ivory Irvin. That was a great catch. But that was really set up by as much time as Jack Wigmore had to get that ball out and let that route uh, develop. Ivory Irvin will get his sixth touchdown of the season. And with the extra point, Baltimore, some point in this game, were down 17 to 7 and are now leading 21 to 17. And Queen City has been quiet since their field goal. This is what good teams do. They say, you know what? This is cool. It's no big deal. Shake off two turnovers. Shake off the mistakes. Go down the field on our opening drive of the second half. Make a statement. Make Queen City come back. Now they got to play from down. It's a little tough for Trails Blanton and this team. Sometimes when they get down, they make some mistakes. So Baltimore's in good position, and uh, we'll see what we'll see how Queen City responds. Yeah, it's going to be how they respond here. And points on the board. They've been lacking points since early on in the first or the second quarter. So they're going to want any sort of points here. But here comes Charles Benton. Pass out of the gate in this drive. And he finds a man. Nice completion right there down the middle. And nice catch uh, by uh, Doug Spelling. My bad. Uh, under the rest too. Gets us a nice catch right here, hangs into the ball, even though he gets hit. That's just a perfectly timed pass. I mean, it's just you know, we have all sorts of defenders uh, in the in the area, but Charles Blanton mm -hmm. timed it perfectly. Giovanni Bolt there for the tackle. Spelling with 66 yards receiving and five catches. Here's a handoff, but the defense just knows that play, read that well. Met zero on the line. Yeah, these safeties for Baltimore are they just fly all over the place. They are spectacular in run co coverage, and Troy LaShaw, not fooled by any of those blocking schemes, got right there at the point of attack. Showing eight defenders in the box. They will rush six, and that's enough to stop zero for a loss of three. Well, how about we call his name again? Troy LaShaw there in the backfield to meet Jet Zero for another loss. This is a huge drive for these safeties. Yeah, and remember, previously in third and very long, they were unable to convert, and here they find themselves once again. Queen City in an empty set. There's the pressure. There's the rush. That'll force an incompletion. Could have been picked off as well. The defense holding strong by Baltimore. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure on the outside there. I don't know if Trell Splanton felt it, but it certainly looked like he felt it based on how that pass left his arm. Baltimore's defense is starting to clamp down a little bit, make things a little uncomfortable for Queen City, and they're going to have to punt this away. Back-to-back -back punts by Queen City. Previously, the punt off of the interception, and now a punt off of a touchdown by Baltimore. 
and that'll even set up Baltimore on their 30 yard line so yeah their momentum is fully on their side yeah it's just totally shifted and you know a team as good as Baltimore they're gonna shift they're so good at at home they're gonna shift momentum when they when they get the opportunity um Queen City's really gonna make something happen here maybe it's maybe cause another turnover yeah that's kind of what they need that they they did force a turnover at some point so we'll see if they can recreate that but how are you going to force a touchdown when warren murray is breaking ankles breaking tackles and getting 10 15 20 yards a pop i mean this is one of the i mean i think this is yes this is absolutely warren murray's best game of the season so far 116 yards on the ground he's breaking tackles right and left oh goodness. got out to midfield with that carry I keep giving him the rock no one's gonna stop him 11 yards yeah. of carry so far in this game. Wow. He's pretty much averaging a first down every carry. Yeah. Dang. Well, then. Here they go, though. It's not a Warren Mary play. Too bad. It is actually a Warren <laughs> Mary play as it becomes a swing pass. And uh, what did I say? A first down every carry. Gets another catch. Gets another first down. Yeah, we spoke too soon. Another Warren Murray uh, pass at the outside. That was his uh, second reception of the day. I think Warren Murray got to the huddle and said, you know what? I want 120 yards to the air, too. What can you do for me, Jack? Wigmore tossed it out to the side. Another first down. I think. So it looks like he has almost 20 yards receiving in two catches. Uh, that was a good catch from him as well picking up a first down once again and they're just beating down this queen city offense as they're getting another set of downs inside the 40 35 yard line of queen city he's big more again looking to pass he's looking deep he finds his man again that's smack chima once again and this time makes a nice catch in coverage uh, Queen City fans, I might, I, I, I might look away. I might get up, go make a bowl of popcorn. I might, cause look how much time Jack Wigmore has. There's just no pressure. There's so much time for these routes to develop. Mac Chima, great catch and a great miss to get a couple extra yards there. Alex Marshall in the vicinity tried to make a play on the pass, couldn't make it, and instead of playing, instead of playing the tackle. He was just, he became one man last in forcing a drop. Here's another handoff. Warren Murray, oh my goodness. He pretty much had arms on him after two yards, but finds a six yard gain anyway. I mean, it just doesn't matter. I mean, what can he do? I mean, this offensive line is, is, is moving people around, but also Warren Murray, once he gets touched, he's making people miss. So it's just a, a perfect storm for this Baltimore offense. Yeah. Well, they're going to line up in our formation. Hanoff once again. Murray, is he going to find the first down? Yes. He just rolls over the defender and will get the first down. Hey, that's heartbreaking when it looks like he was tackled before the first down, but he's going to roll over you. Yeah, I, it, it's, it's Warren Murray just can't do no wrong right now. Would not be surprised if they fake it to him here to throw off the... Queen City defense. Well, Oof. Yeah, this time it's a pass. Sorry, not a pass. A handoff to T. Roy Gaines. I wonder if Queen City dialed in on a T. Roy Gaines heavy diet and instead they're getting the Warner treatment and we're yeah. unprepared for that. Yeah, good call, Mark. <clears throat> Here they come in heavy set. Well, not really one wide receiver to the left. Theroy Gates pushes himself, oh. pushes to the end zone. Will power through, needed the power for that play, and he had the power to spare. I'm sure T-Roy would love another dive on his highlights this week, but how about just moving your feet and your legs and getting another push from this offensive line? He dragged about three people into the end zone. Wow, Baltimore is firing on all cylinders right now. And uh, they're looking, they're looking really good. They're looking unstoppable. If they keep doing this the rest of the year, they might win another championship. Because this <laughs> yeah. backfield is a recipe for success. Absolutely, they have been perfect. It seems like in the red zone scoring. Here's an extra point for Baltimore. They're going to find themselves up 21 
sorry, 28 to 17. Their red scores scoring seems inevitable. Uh, they, they've been in the end zone the second most times in the season, 38 times. Of those 38 times, 20 have resulted in touchdowns. 92% total have resulted in points. And they have been efficient and almost inevitable in the red zone. Here's the kickoff. Queen City will return it all the way to their 25-yard line. The SFL Retroid, now available, free to download. You can play the SFL video game on the go on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. An emulator for the 4K23 in the palm of your hand. Order your Retroid today at GoRetroid.com. Search SFL and download our mod at SimulationFL.net slash 4K23. Retroid, the official console of the SFL. First and 10. Trails Ben this time will be able to make a completion out of the pressure coming to him and will pick up a nice six, you know, a healthy six here again right there by Doug Spelling. Yeah, it was almost a disaster. I think I think uh, Jet Zero thought that might have been for him, but uh, instead he, he did not quite get a finger on it. Doug Spelling got six yards on a catch. That was about the third time we've seen a similar play where he got rushed by a defender, had to throw dump it or make a swing pass to someone thankfully this one was complete here they go second and four it'll be a handoff zero trying to find some room down the middle but there's just traffic right there by a lot of red uniforms clogging up the lanes yeah if i'm tom welsh and this queen city coaching staff i'm, I'm asking myself okay we're down by 11 we're against one of the best teams especially at home in the league what am I doing? Am I letting Trellis Blanton start to sling it downfield? Am I letting Jet Zero get the bulk of the carries here? He's only averaging two a carry. Well, here you go. They're going to answer that question by saying third and short. Let's give it to Zero and design the play to open up the middle. They do. They open up some room for Jet Zero. Pick up a first down. And I guess their answer is let's not punt. Let's keep the ball moving. Let's keep the chains moving. You got to Got it indeed as they'll get their first down once again in the 40-yard line. The swing pass to Zero. Well read by the defense as by the time Zero got the ball, there were three defenders trying to chase him. Yeah, as active as these safeties have been really targeting these running backs for Queen City, I don't know how much that swing pass is going to be effective down the stretch, but we'll see if they mix it up here. <clears throat> Another heavy set by that zero and company he will get the handoff will pick up only a yard if any and it's going to be third and medium they've been mildly successful in third and medium um if they line up in that heavy set again i think it might be tough going from them they're going to line up with twin receivers and one on the right trellis plan will look to pass has all time but instead a nice play by the defense deflecting that ball Blanton will face another first down, a fourth down. Yeah, Alvin Mack there to bat that ball down. It's just, it's just this Baltimore defense. Aside from those opening couple of drives, feeling like they're a little bit on their back foot, they have been spectacular after that first quarter. Nothing happening for Queen City, another punt. That three consecutive punts for Queen City if we ignore the end of half. Uh, first Ooh. half. Oh, we see a penalty. Was this some personal foul happening? That's good. Here? Getting a little chippy. I think Ooh. I think Queen City's a little frustrated. I think they're a little feeling like they got to make something happen here. But oof, that is not what you want to see. That was a rough face mask. Cost them 15 yards. Give Baltimore even better field position. That's not what you want to do. Starting out Baltimore in the 36. Not the best start. That goes Tom Walsh on the sideline, looking frustrated as well with his, with his special teams. Yeah. That's tough sledding. Baltimore in the 36-yard line. Good starting position. Position from them. I expect this to be now a heavy diet of ground game to grind out the clock. It will. It's a handoff. It's Warren Murray. He's still incredible. He's going to find eight. <laughs> Baltimore scored 21 answered points and number 21 Warren Murray is having a career day this is the absolute 
Look at that, just finding the right seam, patient running, <laughs> making the first tackler miss. Eight yards on first down, not bad. Second and short. Yeah, so over 100 yards before this game, he had like 685 yards. So he's almost running a quarter of his total yards in the season in this game alone. But they're going to line up in offset eye formation. It's going to be a handoff this time to T. Roy Gaines. <laughs> Gaines will just destroy some defenders in there. <laughs> T. Roy Gaines says, don't mind me. I'm just going to kind of be a bowling ball here for a second and uh, get the first down. Like I say, when in doubt, short yard situations. <clears throat> Handed to T. Roy. He's averaging four and a half a carry with two touchdowns on the day. Yeah, so it takes the T. Roy Gaines first down. Oh. They're going to set up a nice pass. T. Roy, or sorry, Wigmore. I like the Baltimore's tendency to throw out of first downs, and that's catching Keen City. Not necessarily off guard, but. You know, it's just opening them up because that bat, that combination of throwing out of first downs or handing off out of first downs is tough to beat. But that marks the end of the third quarter, folks. If you're if you're just joining us, this is not looking good for Keen City as they find themselves down 11 and Baltimore looking to extend the lead. It's just Welcome looking. Back. It's so look. It's looking so easy for Baltimore. It's it's incredible. We'll get one play out of this before we go and read our rights as the first play of this quarter will be out of splitbacks. Here is Wigmore and company taking their time. Man in motion. Wigmore will look to pass. Throwing down the middle. That pass is completed. And before we continue on, Chris Curtis, why don't you read us our rights? I guess we won't have Chris Curtis out for now. It is the fourth quarter down 11, but Baltimore is nearing the end zone. Already knocking on the doorsteps. Queen City stacking some defenders here, showing man as Baltimore will motion one of their receivers, stretching out the defense. This might be a run down the middle. It is. Gates breaking some tackles, and the defenders are able to um, collapse there. We, we had the right to remain silent on that one, Mark. We did have the right to remain silent. <laughs> another and, another good carry from T-Roy, though. Here Gaines will set up second and goal inside the four-yard line. It's Gaines it there in the backfield once again, expecting a power play, some power running out of this. Is the handoff. Gates will get some blocks. Oh. Gates had the red carpet for him. Didn't even need to power himself through. Just walked in for a touchdown. T. Roy and Warren Murray are gonna have to how to figure out some sort of gift exchange for this offensive line. Maybe a new car. Maybe they need new HVAC systems. I don't know what the summer was like up in Baltimore. But, wow, this has been a red-letter day for this offensive line. Three touchdowns from T-Roy Gaines. A massive day on the ground for Warren Murray. Huge, huge game since that first onslaught from Queen City. And that marks a 28th unanswered point from Baltimore. Early on, it looked like Queen City had some handle in this game, but... John, it looks like it might be a blowout as things boil down. There is still an entire quarter to go, essentially. But you're down 18, and that's a steep hole to try to get out of. This is looking more like the game I thought it was going to be, <laughs> unfortunately. I thought we were going to have maybe more a blowout for the entire game. Really, it's uh, a, a really huge turnaround. 28 unanswered from Baltimore has just totally changed the uh, complexion of this game. Well, Queen City will have to find answers 
with 8 minutes 50 seconds to go they're going to start in about just inside the 30 yard line Alice with some decent kick returns tonight 28.7 average he has been returning the ball a lot because Baltimore has been scoring a lot they're going to start 27 yard line it's going to be they're going to want to answer back quick it might be a heavy passing game from here on out zero will probably get his name called much less Australis Blanton will run the play clock down to the seven six five here comes the play oh zero still gets a handoff it's a two-year game I'm surprised John I, I thought they would start slinging the rock I don't get it I mean Doug Spelling he's <clears throat> had five catches in the first half I believe only one catch in the second half you gotta start slinging it <clears throat> You're, you can't do something with Jet Zero he's only averaging two yards a carry yeah Talk to Adrian Ellis caught every single pass to him and they still go to Jet Zero this time it's a run to the outside a little more successful than the inside run, but Baltimore's defense, especially the safeties, have just been on point against any edge plays. It's a three-score game, you know? Queen says you gotta start working downfield. Yeah, well, here comes Strellis trying to work downfield, finally finding Doug Spelling after what seems like forever. Seventh catch in 11 targets. Well, near a hundred yards out of that play. They heard me in the booth. Get, get spelling involved downfield, and that's what they did. <clears throat> um, so moves the sticks, but uh, they've got to they've got to keep it moving here. I'm kind of surprised they haven't gone to a no huddle, put a little pressure on Baltimore, cause some communication deficiencies, something. So single back, Charles Blanton will look to pass. Everyone is dying on the line, but a nice catch by Doug Spelling out of single coverage beats the one on one matchup and gets a huge game. Listen, I'm not saying that there should have been three holding penalties on this play, but it kind of looked, <laughs> looked like there might have should have been, but it doesn't matter. Trellis Blanton got this back out to Doug Spelling. And he's the guy. I think he's the guy that Trellis Blanton's got to find. And so far, so good in this drive. It's either him or Adrian Ellis, who himself has 75 yards in five receptions, five targets. Trellis Blanton will once again looking to pass. Has time. Will he get it? No, Ooh. this time. This time, Spelling was well defended, well covered. And Elijah Warfield is on him. And he will force an incompletion. Yeah, Warfield uh, wishes he had that one back. That looked like he could have picked it off, but really good defense, really good effort to stop that from being a touchdown. I like it, though. I like the aggressiveness to go for the end zone and support. Yeah, play. you have to. I agree. They got it. Well, they're going to look to throw deep as uh, Trellis tried to make, take time, tried to target. Looked like it was a... Uh, who was the target there? Didn't quite catch it. Could have been spelling once again, but... You know, Baltimore knew, right? Spelling has been working the wonders. Let's just keep a close eye on him. There was just three defenders right in that zone. Yeah, Giovanni Ball was right there. <laughs> yeah, I think Doug Spelling was the target on that pass. Didn't work out Giovanni Ball there for the defense. Trips formation on top of your screen. Dallas Blinn has time. Wolf Pro, I know that could have been caught by James Matthew Jr. But once again, with the great defense, uh, Elijah Warfield in two out of the last three plays, making some key pass deflections. Yeah, he's clamping down on these receivers, especially on the outside. We're going to go for a field goal here. Listen, it's three scores. I get it. Yeah, this will cut it to a two score game, technically. And it's good. 20 to 35. They cut into the lead. Down to 15, but it is still a mountain to climb. And Baltimore will get the ball with under six minutes left, I believe, in the game. Or just about six. It's under seven minutes, sorry. Wednesday is going to have to figure out a way <clears throat> to stop Warren Murray and T. Roy Gaines. They've combined for over for 175 yards on the ground. 
So this ball will be returned by Baltimore all the way to their 27-yard line. But before we move on, we got some game updates from the other game. Thank you, Mark. Late in this one, fourth down for Dave Burr. Fires and Dan Curtis tried to bring it in. He had a touchdown earlier, but it falls incomplete. Alamo City holds on. Houston has five losses this season. Four have come to Alamo City, Fort Worth, or Seattle. Back to you in Baltimore. Baltimore, here's a toss play to Warren Murray. His probably... That's his worst play. carry of the game. Yeah, his first <laughs> play less than five yards. It's a one-year carry. I keep, I keep looking at you. Know, we checked in on Alamo City a few times. I keep thinking about who's going to beat that team. I'm, I'm having trouble figuring it out. Maybe it's the one team here is looking good. It Baltimore. could be. Baltimore, is, when they look good, they look great. They've been looking great tonight. Queen City, though, that nice defensive play, forcing a sack as the linebacker, Kappa Jones, sent to the blitz and finds Jack Wigmore in the backfield. <laughs> he took Ooh. a really wide angle there and got all the way around Jack Wigmore <laughs> for that sack. Cause for some celebration. They gotta, they gotta give a few more of those before they can... <laughs> He ran about a wide receiver's worth of running out there to get <laughs> yeah. to Wigmore. Wigmore will roll out to find room for himself, and oh. he finds a man wide, well, not wide open, Max Chima open enough to get the catch. Daily Holder was the one wide open, but Chima with the nice catch for more yards, and they're just, they just seem unstoppable. Oh, it's, that's so deflating. Man, Kappa Jones had his first sack of the season just then. They held uh, yeah. Warren Murray to his worst carry of the game, but Mac Chima is there to convert, move the sticks, and now they can run out, uh, run out even more of the clock. Yeah, with Mac Chima over 120 yards, receiving has a stellar night this evening. We'll continue. Sorry, that's not Chima. Um, that's Ivory Irvin, who himself is over 100 yards. Even before this catch, we'll just keep the chains going, keeping on digging that dagger deep in the hearts of Queen City. Just Wigmore putting uh, that ball exactly where it needed to be. 136 yards for the day for Ivory Irving. Yeah. Jack Wigmore at some point in this game had a quarterback rating of under 50 because of the interception. Now has a quarterback <laughs> rating of 127. Here's a handoff. Murray powering through, trying to find Rumo, pick up seven. Uh, it's like just seven. Just at some point, <laughs> yeah. average. What's wrong? Ten. What's wrong with you, Warren? Why is it just seven? That's two. That's two and a half yards under your average for the game. Are you okay? <laughs> you didn't get a first down. <laughs> this disc. <laughs> Yeah, but that, that interception for Jack Wigmore is well in his rear view. He's thrown for 388 yards in this game, mm -hmm. two touchdowns. Huge yeah. day for him. Has only been sacked once, and that was in this drive. Here comes second and short. And they tried to run the play clock. No, they, here's a toss to Gaines. Gaines still running. Gaines still up, and finally would be pushed out of bounds and Queen City is just squandering or you know they're just struggling down there DJ Kogannon with a tackle yeah that was that was a really nice play <laughs> T-Roy Gaines you know uh, in any other day we'd be going wow what an incredible day T-Roy Gaines is having 45 yards three touchdowns it is incredible but warren murray has also had a spectacular day this is such a good day at the office for this backfield tier against quietly has three huge. touchdowns huge huge game three touchdowns you wouldn't think so only has 11 carries 45 yards but here's here he is again out of a top play has the nice block by ivory Irvin too Goodness me, wide receivers playing run blocking. You love to see it. You love to see wide receivers, even this late in the game. They're up by two scores. They could maybe put, take their foot off the gas just a little bit by Ivory Irvin. That was a great block on the outside. Tiro Gaines, another great carry for him. He's over 50 for the day. Second and five. It's not even second and goal. They could 
technically end up in the goal line, not gonna touch them, but still have three fresh set of downs. We'll see. But Gaines will get the call. Gaines will only get two yards. He got blasted by GB Wallace there after making that first man miss. That was uh, that's his 11th tackle of the day for GB Wallace. So he's quietly had a big day. He had that interception. He also had two passes defensed. Bright spot for this Queen City defense today is GB Wallace. Yep, GB Wallace. How we've called his name a lot of times. He's been busy. He has been busy because Baltimore has been out there quite <laughs> a lot of times on the field. Third and two. I see a tear against. I smell a tear against play. <laughs> we shall see. Toss play. Gaines. Oh, he doesn't get No home. way. He, the first down. he rolled over the defender. Everybody in the country knew that T Roy Gaines is going to get that ball. Even Queen City knew it. They were ready for him. They're going to. Uh, oh, Baltimore's so shot. I think they're challenging that. It might have been a touchdown. No way. Is that what they're saying? Because I wouldn't challenge a first down. I guess Tim Johnston thinks that that might have been a touchdown. Let's take another look at this. So we're watching if he crosses the plane. So he wasn't down. Wow. Maybe Ooh. he's right. We'll Referee, what here. do you see? Play stands. Oh. Okay, so this is just going to be first and goal. <laughs> God, the vultures uh, were out for blood. No. Wow. Aggressive, aggressive with the red uh, laundry out there. My, my guy, you're leading 15 and you're challenging a near touchdown. But They're, 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 pick, they're picking on the carrion <laughs> of these Corsairs right now, trying to get as much blood from the stone as they can. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, it's first and goal. All they need technically is some push down the middle. You know what's coming. You know what's coming. It's a you toss. You know what's coming. Fourth touchdown of the day for T. Roy Gaines. Everybody again knew T. Roy Gaines uh, is going to get that ball. Queen City can do nothing about it. This offensive line has just had one of the best days that I have seen since I've been watching the SFL. Yeah. Baltimore's three last touchdowns have all been t Roy gains. They've all been, it's a two-year touchdown, followed by a six-year touchdown, followed by a one-year touchdown. He is your red zone GOAT, at least in this game. <laughs> Jesus, me, oh my. Out of nowhere, 42-20. Partner, what was the score at halftime? I think it was 17-14. Oh, man, that is brutal. It's, uh, some, some, there was a switch that got flipped in halftime, maybe even before halftime, and Baltimore said, you know what? We've had enough time. We've spent too much time playing with our food. Let's just score, 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 and score that day. <clears throat> Here's a kickoff. Uh, well, Monday night, join Cameron Irvine and Stephen Hacker as they break down all the action from this weekend on this week in the SFL at 7.15 p.m. Eastern before the Jacksonville Kings put their season on the line against the D.C. Dragons. Kickoff is at 8.15 p.m. Eastern right here on SFL YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, thank you everyone who's been joining us on YouTube, everyone on chat uh, for joining us in what could have been a close game, but it turned into a blowout as Trellis Latin makes a nice throw down the middle. He's now going to go in his no huddle offense. Looks to throw out a bunch formation that is almost completed to his tight end. And what started as a hundred percent and eighty percent completion rate from Trellis Blatton has nosedived into a sixty-four percent completion rate. It's really fallen off. Uh, Queen City's got three games upcoming. Jacksonville, Atlanta, Motor City. Those are three winnable games, but not if they play the way that they played tonight. Really uneven performance from this team. Trellis will, fi will find a receiver that quite catch uh, the number on that, but they'll, they're going to keep going. They're going to need to get going. 
Charles Man, another completion in double coverage. It was a nice catch right Nice there. catch. Three wide receivers spread out. Trellis looking to pass. And that's Ooh. an interception. What a play. Jumping, climbing the ladder. Alvin Mack will make the first turnover against Queen City and shuts the door on this. I'm not going to call it a potential comeback, but some attempt at a comeback. Alvin Mack putting an exclamation point on this game for Baltimore. Baltimore headed into the home stretch. They do have a bye in a couple weeks. They play Atlanta. They play the Skyhawks. Atlanta losing to Canton last night. Baltimore yeah. is in prime position to win this division pretty handily, but a Carolina game at the end of the year, I've, I've got that circled on my calendar. And with this, Baltimore will get their another win at home. It's a two-minute warning. What a turn of events. I thought I was going to be competitive, but Baltimore proven why they are the five-time world champion or asphalt champion as they put in the pain against Queen City. Their, their home record has been outstanding. Uh, number one all time in the league, but also at some stretch in time, you know, they were just winning three whole seasons of home game. This is the first time up by Queen City. Queen City uh, yeah, you talked about their upcoming matches, winnable games. What are the kind of lessons they're going to take away from this game? I, I think they've got to learn that you, you can't lean on Jet Zero if you're not going to block, if you're not going to, you know, do the stuff that you need to do to spring him, get a little more balance in your play calling. It's tough to win games on the road when you're averaging two yards a carry. Um, it's it's really, really tough. Trellis Blanton, he started this game out pretty well. Mm -hmm. ag aggressive, he finding did. some targets. Doug Spelling looking good early on, especially. He's up to 10 catches now, but a lot of those have been in this kind of garbage time. But yeah, some stuff looked good, but this defense did not look great. They did not take care of... Um, you know, the, their their offense, when they forced two turnovers, they could have converted those into more points, but only three. There's just a lot of things to look at. And, and I think it starts with play calling. I feel like that's been an issue, some pass protection issues as well. But, you know, also Baltimore is a great football team. So it's it's tough right. to learn every lesson, especially you're going, you're going against three pretty bad opponents in the coming weeks. They're things that they could probably address, but it's a tough loss for them. Tough loss for them. Baltimore, though, will continue their hot streak. It's going to be their fourth straight win uh, of the season. Six. They're going to move themselves up to seven and three, so they're still ahead in that division. Um, in that in that fourteen division, the seventh win puts them at one and a half games ahead of Carolina it, uh, at least coming into the week their odds they are pretty much almost setting their selves in stone in the play yeah I'm I'm <laughs> I know it's a few weeks away I know we're a little bit early we don't know about seating we don't know about positioning there's still a lot of regular season left but I'm already looking really forward to some of these potential playoff matchups because there are some really, really good teams in the league this year. And yep. at least my from from an eyeball test, from an eyeball perspective, <clears throat> it's tough to to bet against Baltimore. There are a couple of better teams in terms of win loss records, some statistics, but Baltimore has got so much going for them um, in terms of just veteran leadership, composure. Not getting mm. worried when you turn the ball over. This is stuff that really matters come playoff time. Your biggest uh, potential rivals into the playoffs are in the South Division. That is a crazy division. Yeah, uh, it is. But here is Charles Blunt not giving up, making those last few plays. 
as the clock will expire soon enough. Under 45 seconds left. Bunch of formation. They're going to... They're going to uh, clock have, it. Yeah, <laughs> clock try, it here. You're try to eat into this lead. Why not? You know, get some more reps in. Try to figure out what you can do to, uh, to, to, to maximize your learning from a loss yeah. like this. They're going to try to dig into that playbook. The question is, how deep is that playbook? Doesn't look like they got any new tricks out of the bag. We've seen this formation. Uh, they've thrown to uh, Doug Spelling out of this formation a few times. So if anything, if you're Baltimore, you're going to just sit on some zone against Spelling. Well, they throw this time. It's a throw to the tight end and it's a completion. And, you know, something that worked. <laughs> something that worked, yeah. I mean... You know these these are these are good receivers. They're 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 talented. Blanton's having one of his best seasons individually that he's had mm -hmm. since entering the league. There's stuff here to be hopeful about. It's just yeah. it's it's like they can't get everything going at once. Baltimore had everything going for them at once. I mean, they really this was just a bulldozer running downhill. And it feels like when Queen City's got one of those things in their game that isn't quite working, it makes the other parts of their game feel tighter, feel like more of a struggle. And it just it just didn't work out tonight against a really good Baltimore team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Baltimore has been good historically. That, uh, ever since their inception, they've always had a winning record. They've never missed the playoffs. It's never incredible. Missed the playoffs. What, a, what, a, what a run. And give it a go. Queen City. One last chance. Or sorry, second to last chance at moving the ball forward. They're going to go for fourth and ten here. And Baltimore has just been dominant at least after the second half started. That's just been all Baltimore. Yeah, they, they had some momentum going in. They had a long scoring drive at the end of the first half. And they got the ball right back at the beginning of the second and just not looked back. I mean, Queen City just, oh, been oh, totally shut down. Me. And Alvin Mack says, you know what? I'm not done yet. My night's not done. I have the interception. I want a sack. What a game he's had. Yeah, the sack counts for a TFL technically. So he has a check mark. Pretty much in almost every defensive category. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe he could force a fumble here. <laughs> maybe he could run one back for a touchdown. Exactly. We'll see. Well, he's no longer on the field, so he's not going to no, get that. No, and they're just going to do a victory formation, yeah. run into the locker room. Huge right, home right. victory again. For sure, huge home victory for Baltimore. They're going to keep their stranglehold of their division. Queen City will fall. To three and six, they're gonna. Have, that means it's gonna be an even harder time for them to come out of their division. They're gonna put them, I believe, two games behind, and that is the end of your ball game. And we've talked already extensively out of, about this game, John. Anything else you want to cover? But also, who is your player of the game? <laughs> I mean. Take your pick, right? I mean, Jack Whitmore, 388 yards through the air. He could have gotten tight and a little weird early with that interception, but instead finished it with a huge game. You could pick Warren Murray, who had almost 150 yards rushing by himself, nine yards a carry, incredible day. But how do you score four touchdowns and not be named player of the game? T. Roy Gaines, right. 71 yards uh, uh, rushing on 20 attempts. He, he converted so many first downs. He had those four touchdowns. He is my player of the game, T-Roy Gaines. Go enjoy that crab bisque I was talking about. Yeah, good pick. I, I would also go for him, Jack Wigmore. A very close second, Warren Murray as well. And folks, thank you for joining us. That, has, that will be it for us. As Once again, join us on Monday for that roundup of the week but for tonight that is the result of this game baltimore winning 42 against queen city 20. this is mark lopez your play-by-play -play commentator john warren is my uh, analyst and i had mel gibson and justin seed on stats cameron irvine producing the show thank you everyone and have a good night goodbye